is going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video from JD's Nerdverse. We are playing through again with uh, Battle for Middle Earth. I played the first video I've ever done with this game on my last video. I didn't show this part, so I'm going to show it now. This is the game layout for getting into the game. You have school, battle school, which will teach you how to play the game. Options, which I don't need to show you that. Multiplayer, which you can only play in LAN right now because they don't have a server available. This, this game was made in 2006. Okay, Solo playthrough, which is what we're doing. And you have two different types of campaigns. One is good, one is uh, good and evil. And I'm going to play both on this channel, but I'm going to play through all the way through one, and then I'm going to do this, the other one, okay? And just so everyone knows, I do have this played through on the hardest uh, difficulty possible. And we're going to dive into the next mission, so let's load the game up. Before I, it loads up, oh, it loads up very fast, okay. Um, I was going to say before it loads up, let's play, uh, let's point out some things here. Alright, so we're going through the first mission. So the last mission that we saw I'll let him talk so the last mission we saw we played through the mines of Moria okay and that's all the way over here this is where our heroes are okay and we got some other things we're doing but we have the mines of Moria we played through already now we're playing through this is the the meat and potatoes of the game you have about five or six spread out campaigns you got to do with the heroes like over here and there's some over here there's other heroes over here, uh, like the guys that come from Minas Tirith or, or, or Gondor. <clears throat> but we're playing through with this, and so we want to get our... So, I didn't go over this part. Because I wanted to just play through and see how well it played through. So now that I see that it's beautiful, it, it plays out very well, I want to showcase some things. Where I'm hovering over right now, it says command points. So, you, those command points apply to you actually building your army out of whatever you're building out of. Rohirrin... Um, the Gondor soldiers, whatever you're building your arm out of, that's what this is for. And then, so these, I didn't really go over these too much. These are like power-ups you get. So you can do this to heal someone. You can do you can do a whole bunch of things with it. It's not just like one thing. And this is your in-game menu, which I'm not going to mess with. Okay, so we have options here. So we have an army right here. Uramir, okay, uh, from the movie. He's the one that leads over here. right there. You can see him uh, riding. And uh, that's him right there. And we get to pick where we go. So we can get another power-up, which we don't want right now. What we want is we want to go to Rohan, and we want to get 20 command points. So we're going to go right to that. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is build this, uh, we want to build this. It's a well, Rohan well. It actually heals your troops. So if you get down to like one soldier in this little battalion here, it'll heal them up and you can get the whole squad back. Let's look and see uh, what we have to do to get a couple extra bonus points for our power-ups over here. If we get one garrison, one uh, uh, archer in the tower, I'll show you who that is, and we have to level up Uymir. So Umir, Umir, or whatever you want to call him, <laughs> played by, I think it's played by, um, uh, Key Carl Urban. Carl Urban, I think is what it is. So what he does, he's got a very special ability that he gets. So first off, he gives 100% damage bonus to Calvary around him. But what he also does, level 2, you get Outlaw Leadership. And what that does is every time you kill someone, you, you, you get resources for it. So your farms right here create resources. They also create these guys, peasants. So, we we want to uh, get him level up as soon as possible because the way that the Rohirrim fight, especially these guys, the uh, they're called uh, Rohirrim, Rohan Rohirrim. That's basically their cavalry name. That's the unit name of them. And what we want to do, what the way they fight is, they're probably the most powerful cavalry unit in any fantasy. Game. So this is the enemy. I, I'm not going to fight it right now. Um, they'll beat me too fast. I want to build my army up first. It's a means to an end. So I'm going to come here. So what that means is there was something here we could have fought in and uh, knocked it out. And this is showing me I have another power up, which I don't need, but I can use that draft. Basically, but you can you can get armor throughout this game. So you can get armor throughout the game, and at this point, we don't have the ability to get armor. We don't have an armory. 
but this will let us uh, give all of our peasants armor. Yeah, so let's get here. We need to get one of these going. These are little towers that help defend your castle or whatever you want to call it, your land. You can get farms out away from your thing too, but those are those are constantly being fought over by the opposition. Okay. So he's actually leveling up pretty fast. Leveling up pretty fast, so he'll get he'll get his uh, power up pretty quickly. So you see how this guy's got like low health? Let's go over here and I'll show you. It's gonna be three hundred to get that. Okay, cool. So see how his health is gradually growing up. So this is how you maintain your army and keep it from from this battle till pretty much the last battle in the game, which is about uh, the battle of the Black Gate. Is you keep bringing your troops back to this to heal, and the goal is you never have to really replenish your troops with uh, like, like buy more troops unless you get more power points. So yeah, let's do this, and we're going to. So now we're in a spot where we need to level up. We need to get more resources. So battle is the best way to do that with with this. All right, so just exploring the map real quick. They like to expand, and there's a strategy to beating everyone that I call I call putting a squeeze on. I'm gonna send them back over here. You'll see more about some of the things we're going past. I'll, I'll show you more. Don't worry. I, I will do that. So the Rohirrim are very powerful, heavy, heavy, uh, heavy soldiers, heavy, uh, cavalry. So they really will just ride over anyone. You can actually change their stance and they'll do like more damage, but then they take way more damage. So and I don't want to do that. I think they do just enough damage the way they're at. Now these troops right here that we're using will not, we will not have them much longer. I can promise you that we will not have them too much longer. At least not like in this mission, maybe, but not beyond this mission. Okay, so we got an archer unit, and as much as I hate doing this because I hate wasting like troops, is I'm gonna send the archers there. We get an extra power point for doing it. It's dumb, but it 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 is worth it. And there's also something else cool we're going to do with these archers, but we're not going to do it at this very second. Um, so we're just going to wait a little bit. Right now we're just building up our defenses. I want to make sure they get to this. So this is like smack dab in the middle of a very common alley they do to get to our place. Get up to our, uh, not our castle, but our, you know, our in encampment. And yeah, so they're in there. Perfect, see? Got it accomplished, very good. Now we're almost le ready to level up. Mirror. Now, see, right here, there's actually a th some things missing here. One of the missing is called a archery, or I'm sorry, a uh, armory. Where you can upgrade your defenses, you can upgrade your weaponry, you can upgrade your troops to level 2 automatically. Uh, you can upgrade your armors, your weapons everything and eventually you can upgrade your uh, your archers too, archery too see in this game not right now, the first couple of missions you can. But usually you can get flaming arrows. And flaming arrows are, are kind of a big deal in this game. They they turn what is a, a, a minuscule, weak, weak unit into a pretty powerful unit nonetheless, to say the least. So right now we're just building up and building up and I think I want to get one more of these guys, which are 20, and then one archer for these guys. And they're going to go here. Yeah, they're standing there. Okay. So there's a strategy I call, like, 
putting the squeeze on. You, you literally gradually suffocate them and drain them of their, like, drain them of their resources, and you gradually just squeeze them. Well, they're down to very little to accomplish what they need to accomplish, and it makes the game pretty easy for you. Now, right now, they're not being too aggressive, but usually they're pretty aggressive in trying to take your, your stuff. And archers are 15, and these guys are 10. So you can get a bunch of them if you want to, I just don't. Them go and uh, so you see how that little line comes up that makes a battalion now that's the worst battalion you could possibly make in the game is a cavalry mixed with like infantry it's the worst one ever however as soon as we get some cavalry out, or uh, it, uh, archers I'll show you just how beneficial it is to do this so now, archers are very weak units by nature. They have no defense, and until they get flaming arrows, they really can't do a lot of damage. Okay? So, just by their very nature, they just don't do much. They're going to die, so I'm not too worried about it. It's just, it's just getting rid of their power points. And I'm pretty sure once they're out, I can probably buy another thing, archers. See, here they come. Now watch the, above all the troops whenever they run over. There's like a little plus five or plus three or something that comes over their heads. See those little plus fives? That's resources getting added to my resource dump. Now I'm going to use my healing ability. Boom. And that healing ability works just like the well and it'll replenish my troops. And it'll also replenish any dead troops needed and it'll heal the ones that are available as well. I'm going to pull back here and let them chase me. Rohirans are very good on the charge. They're not good at standing there fighting. Eventually the opponent gets smart and they use some better troops. And when that happens, I'll tell you about that. Now, see, usually these guys just run right up and kill them with a, with no restriction. But now having these guys in front, it does a little bit more. Uh, it holds them off better. And also having more troops means that if they kill, like, there's ten there. There's five archers and five peasants here. If you kill nine of them, you can still replenish the entire battalion. If you go to this healing thing right here, the healing well. And then, and now they're going to do their sneaky, sneaky stuff right now where they, they won't attack you. They'll just attack your outside stuff. But I'm going to leave these guys here to protect. They're, they're going to be good enough for protection. And these guys aren't really that good. I'm, I'm just being honest or not. They won't be good until you're able to actually fully protect them. Bring them back there to heal real quick. Now these are little uh, outposts. And what they do is they don't give you much. But they give you an ability to... So for this, in this case, I'm going to have a well, a well, and another farm. Farms make all your resources. As you get more farms, you get more resources. Pretty, pretty plain math. See how quickly they die?
If I stop talking, it's because I'm focusing on the game for a minute. <laughs> and I'll just bring them right back here, let them heal. And that's that's it's just it's the cycle of the game. Now, I just died, so what I can do now, that 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 unit of archers got killed. So what I can do now is I can get another one. So if you look at the building, see how it says rank? When it gets level two, usually, not in the first couple bit missions, but usually, it'll actually let you get flaming arrows. Just like with um, this one, it'll actually let you get some other things too. There's like a shield you can get, you can actually get um, uh, archery Rohirrim, which are like, the best units you can get. And I'll, I'll kind of explain the strategy whenever those come up. So now, they're trying for this again. And that's another thing that's good about the Rohirrim, is because they're cavalry, they can cover so much ground so fast. And because the early maps are very small compared to the later maps, but the, some of the earlier maps for sure are just not as big, so you can cover the entire map very quickly. I'm going to go ahead and kill these guys so nothing happens. And look at our resources. We we have not really added too much more stuff to our resources, and we're getting that much more kills. And we we have so much more resources now because we're getting more kills. Every time I hear the prepare for battle, I almost want to say, in fact, make it double, <laughs> like the Team Rocket. Every time. Almost every time, it never fails. I just hear, in my mind, I just say that. Prepare for battle, in fact, make it double. And these these guys literally are not going to do much right now. The It is good to have the uh, giraffe thing where it gives them like a sword and a shield. That's better than what they were. But until about three missions in, it won't let us get the things that really advance this. The archers get flaming arrows, and they also get armor, so they get they get more powerful arrows, but they get flaming arrows, which is like the important part. And again, we're gonna do the same exact thing we did before. Two, two, and three. And like I said, I, I'm not overly worried. So see these two little dots above these guys? That means they leveled up. So your normal troops have now leveled up. See, they just survived an assault pretty handily. But with flaming arrows, you'll have a whole line of them just walling up the opposition. Sorry, I'm really getting uh, into this. I really enjoyed this game. Playing it's one of my favorite games of all time. And boom, 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 boom. Run right over them. Boom, 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 boom. Run right over them. There is a really good move you get from King Theoden whenever you get him. He's a little bit later in the game. But uh, basically you have what's called Glorious Charge. Like from the battle, from the, from the Return of the King. And you will literally like take all the 
a cavalry unit you can get and just run rough shot over anyone in front of you. And so these guys are kind of weak, so I'm going to send them back here, though. Just give them something to do. I would like to get them leveled up, if possible, but there's no guarantee that you will because they don't do enough damage. The only hope is possibly we can level them up whenever... Um, we can possibly level them up whenever we get... Uh, whenever we take down their final citadel. The final base, or whatever you want to call it. If you're noticing that a lot of the attacks we do are hit and run. There are better ones we, we get later, um, especially when we get the archers. The hit and run tactics really showcase in that one. Okay, we've pretty much taken out all the stuff they can get. We just need to go start going for the kill, go get the knockout. As you can see, our command point's going down, so we've lost a troop or two. We're going to retreat, heal. Potentially, we'll get these guys a chance to get some kills. We're going to hopefully heal really fast and then come right back out and help them. That's the goal. I don't want to be back here too long and get them guys killed. Heal up. We'll see if we get a troop back. That's just so nice. So this is one of the reasons why I like this game. I don't know if you've ever heard of the game um, Age of Empires. I think everyone who's a gamer fan has heard of Age of Empires. That might be an asinine statement to say. Like, have you ever heard of this? But, um, and we can't get Elven Wood yet. Okay. So that's like an asinine statement to say. However, um, are we back to full, full health? We are back to full health. Let's go. Let's do it. But uh, the reason why I like this game so much is I was a really big fan of uh, Age of Empires. But what I hated about Age of Empires is you'd spend all this time building up this grand army, this masterful plan, this put together this great strategy, and then you got to start over every campaign of like you know rinse, wash, repeat, make new troops, rinse, wash, repeat. This one, what's cool about it is you're making an army that you're going to take with you the entire game. That's where this one drastically differed from any other like game at the time. I mean, it is 11 years later, so the technology, it's probably better graphics were able to be made. try to get these guys in. Uh, I don't know if I want to do that. That thing shoots arrows. So we're just gonna wait. We're gonna wait over here in the in the brush. We want the we want the Rohirrim. They can run in and out and heal and then sprint back in. We want them taking the blunt of all their attacks. We don't want the archers to because we're gonna have to redo this.
just gonna run off. Hopefully they chase me and leave my other troops alone. That's the goal here. Run back here and heal, and we should have one final attack to finish this game off. See how little damage that's doing? Now, if those are flaming arrows, this thing would already be destroyed and we'd be moving on to the next building. But because they're not flaming arrows, it doesn't do that much damage. So, like I said, the archers are good, and they're great for this game, but they really get handcuffed. They really do get handcuffed. Let's come back down here. Let's do it. Let's get this. Let's get it done. See, they have, <laughs> look how little damage they're doing. It's uh, kind of comical, but in the same way, same breath, it's kind of sad. But they're doing so little damage, it's ridiculous. And these, these missions, personally, are my personal favorite. I don't like, I don't dislike the missions where you have to play as, like, Aragog and whatever. But I prefer building the army, I prefer building the strategy, I prefer controlling massive amounts of units, so on and so forth. So we're going to go right for this one. If you destroy their citadel, they can't make any more buildings until they repair and replace the citadel. It's a little fun fact there. I don't like to because I like to do it last. Nine times out of ten, I might have to destroy the citadel. <laughs> because they're going to keep rebuilding these and I can't, I'm not doing enough damage all at once. When you get bigger armies, you'll, you'll be able to like destroy everything all at once. But I only have so many troops that aren't doing much at all. And... Some of them, as soon as they get built, are going to be able to shoot us with arrows. Like, I don't think either one of these has an archer, no. But that's what I wanted to do, is take out the ones with the archers first, so they can stop killing me. So now they can't build... See how that stopped at 68, right here? See how this stopped at 68? They can't build anything, they can't repair anything until the citadel is rebuilt. For all intents and purposes, uh, this battle is won. I'm gonna get these in a little closer. So maybe that the uh, close up guys, the uh, hand to hand guys, close combat guys, whatever you wanna call them, can do a little something here. There we go. So we got the full amount of our army, uh, got this battle done. I think all the horsemen, except for maybe one unit, have leveled up. All but one, maybe? No? It'll tell us at the end if anyone if anyone hasn't leveled up or anything. And we get the win. Pretty easy win. Uh, like I said, I the battle, the my army, the 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 the, the really the face of my army I haven't gotten yet. It's just we have to use them to get through that part of the game. You get points. I never actually went over the battle statistics, so I'll go over that here in a second. So we gain extra. So total victory means we did pretty good. I don't know if there's one above that. It might be a supreme victory. I don't know. But battle statistics basically shows us how many troops we trained, buildings constructed. It also shows us how many things we destroyed. So we destroyed 619 uh, units. Uh, we destroyed 16 buildings. And we had a time bonus. I guess 74, 740 seconds. I don't know. Uh, bonus. We got all the extra bonuses done. So we get power points for that. Uh, hero bonus, so he leveled up one, so we get points for that, and some of your units get bonuses too. And the next step will actually show us how many kills they got. So, uh, Marohirim are definitely like the backbone of our army. Uh, Umir does pretty good. You can actually rename them too, so if you click on them, you can call them like, I was going to make the joke of like Batman and Robin, I'm not going to do that. Though. And, going to continue here. Not, so, uh, 
So we get the win, we get that plot of land, so that is like, we've, we've earned that. Now, I would usually go go ahead and go to the next mission, but I'm trying to break these up into little itty bitty bitty parts, so they're kind of shorter videos than my other videos I've done. So I'm going to go ahead and save it right here. Save as Let's Play, yes sir, let's do that. And, uh, yeah. I want to thank everyone for watching. This has been JD's Nerdverse. This has been Battle for Middle Earth, Lord of the Rings. And, uh, just keep, keep your eye out. I'm going to do a lot of these videos. I'm going to do the entire campaign, both light and dark side. And, uh, that's it. And everyone have a good one. See ya.